So I heard you guys wanted RTX 4060s. Well, you've got them. You've got, this is Amazon. You've got three of them here. Uh, so Amazon is usually very slow to get uh, new graphics cards in, but they've got three of them. We've got an MSI Asus Zotac. We've also got an MSI 3060, the old generation selling, outselling the new generation is the best seller. 12 gigabytes, maybe that's the reason why. But I'll have a link to some of these new graphics cards if you want to pick these up. Uh, the German website Hardware Looks did some tests of five GPUs and we want to see some of the results for that. They did a lot of work. Uh, the tests were Asus Gigabyte in a 3D, uh, MSI Ventus and Zotax Spider-Man edition. Um, very, very good power limits on all of them, 115 watts. That obviously comes from, from NVIDIA. Uh, Asus comes out looking sweetest in the in, in the spec sheet 2505 megahertz boost 2.2 slot occupancy what does that mean that means three slots that's a good thing or a bad thing everyone else is at two slots uh three heat pipes and we've got dual bios that's all asus the other ones not quite as impressive the actual results, this is for Time Spy Extreme Graphics. We can see the 4060s. We can see that coming in at 4900, just under 5000. Uh, this is well ahead of the RTX 3060. That's impressive. That's an impressive boost. Uh, and we're seeing them neck and neck with the RX 7600. I've seen a number of charts and the RX 7600. Uh, is generally speaking just a little bit below in most charts. This one is a little bit unusual in having, th th there's a lot of data here. You probably want to take a look at this website if you want to see the, the, the full comparison. I'll link to it. The other really important factors, we've got temperature and RPM. Zotac, Zotac's card looks pr pretty impressive. They've got 1600 RPM. We've got 1630 RPM for Asus with their dual BIOS and uh, an incredible 2680 RPM for Gigabyte. What are they doing over there? That is going to be noisy. Another really important factor is DLSS 3. This is something new for the 40 series. We didn't know how this was going to perform at the 4060 level. The performance is impressive. 4060 uh, cards, you've got 1440p Cyberpunk up to 117 fps using dlss3 we've got even with the quality setting 55 rps did i say rps fps for uh, cyberpunk that's not bad the one that i would probably recommend is either balanced or performance and we're getting 89 74 uh, frames per second 4k diablo 4 we've got they're using the MSI card because that was the most powerful one. Uh, the MSI card comes in at 108 FPS at the quality setting at 4K. This is really impressive stuff and we can see more and more of these impressive numbers. It's definitely something to try out and see how well it works. It does work better with some games than with others. thing we uh, wanted to know was what's the performance of PCIe 3 versus PCIe 4. There's a small difference of about 3 to 4 uh, percent. PCIe 3, this is a, an, an 8 lane uh, GPU. There's a very small difference in performance at PCIe 3. So if you've got a 5700G, 5600G, you are probably going to lose two or 3% performance, but that's not too bad. We've got some numbers now from NVIDIA. We've got a comparison of GTX 1060, RTX 2060, 3060, and 4060. The, the 1060, the inclusion of the 1060 is a bit bit misleading because the 1060 uses a different architecture to the RTX cards. If you want to learn about the RTX architecture, I have a couple of videos that cover the RTX architecture and the Turing architecture. Those 
both were from 2018 when the new architecture came into play. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, I'll, I'll link to those videos. But the main thing to notice here is that uh, the, the games that use DLSS and RT perform tons better than the games that don't use DLSS and RT. And that's the thing to, 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 to take away from here. You can see here DLSS and, and RT for Portal five times, nearly five times the performance improvement. And we can see the GTX 1060, it's not doing very well at all. But then again, that is a completely different architecture. This is probably one of the most important uh, data points. We've got 400 games. I used to keep track of all the games and app applications that use RT uh, RTX. 400, uh, most of them games, some of them productivity software. 79% of 40 series gamers turn RT, uh, turn on DLSS and 83% of 40 series gamers turn on real-time ray tracing. What this is telling us is that both DLSS and RT are very popular and it tells us that they're here to stay. Um, it also tells us if you have got a game or an app using RTX, you probably want to test them to see whether or not they do justice uh, in, in your situation. I tend to use DLSS. I tend not to use uh, ray, ray tracing, but uh, the, the, the popularity of both of these are a pretty good indication that we're going to have these as a long term feature with uh, NVIDIA GPUs. I thought some of you might be interested in the data for the Passmark uh, gra for gra graphics, the 4090, 4080 coming in at 35,000, 39,000. And we have now got the RTX 4060 laptop. This has the same TGP of around 115 watts and it's coming in at about, about half half of the top performers that's significant because that tells us that you're paying about what about one sixth or one fifth of the cash for the 4090 but you're getting about half the performance according to this particular benchmark now that's obviously something which doesn't give the full story in ai for instance the extra memory in the 4090 will make a lot of difference even if it's not captured in this benchmark but the performance relative to the 4090, 4080 is very good for the laptop version of the GPU and for the desktop version of the GPU, it's also going to be pretty good when that finally makes it onto the chart. We have another chart here showing the AI performance for the 4060, very good performance once DLSS is, is turned on. And again, you really want real-time ray tracing to be turned on to get the full boost of that performance. If you saw the videos that I was talking about um, from 2018, it will explain why that is, why you need both RT and DLSS turned on to get the full benefit. On the NVIDIA website, what caught my eye was the 242 teraflops for the tensor cores. The tensor cores are the ones that are involved in machine learning, artificial intelligence, 2.4 times more than the RTX 3060. That's a massive improvement for AI, for machine learning. We've got moderate improvements for shaders and RT cores, massive improvement for tensor cores, but we also have a reduction in the frame buffer. So the 12 gigabytes maximum goes down to eight gigabytes. Not sure why that is, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but this is impressive. This is a little bit disappointing. We've got AV1 for video processing. We've also got an increase in the L2 cache. That's an important improvement. What uh, NVIDIA are, are claiming here is that having more L2 cache gives us an effective in improvement in the, in the memory bandwidth. I'm not really qualified to, to, to comment on that, but the extra L2 cache is very welcome. I think that's a very positive development. We can also see the improvement from the the energy consumption 100 watts for the 1060. Remember, the 1060 doesn't have all the paraphernalia for real-time ray tracing and the uh, artificial intelligence acceleration. But 100 watts for the 1060, we go all the way up to 170 watts, then we fall back to 110 watts with the 4060. This is a really, really significant improvement. And I hope that in future, uh, I really do hope that uh, 
uh, NVIDIA continue with the energy efficiency. Obviously with energy efficiency, you really want to get a, a, a decent power supply. That's where most of, of the energy efficiency comes in. But having energy efficient uh, graphics cards, that's also an important one. I don't know, maybe at the high end with a 4090, 4080, energy efficiency is not as important. But with the lower end, where people are not looking for performance, no matter the cost, uh, I think it is important to have this energy efficient, this energy efficiency. It makes for quieter GPUs, and I think as people come onto the market for these GPUs, maybe their first experience of a GPU, if it can be a quieter one, um, more energy efficient, it, one that will fit with any power supply, basically, I think that's a positive development, and hopefully, uh, Nvidia will continue to focus on that. Another thing that they uh, really uh, emphasized was the improvement in costs uh, as you have better energy efficiency with very high energy costs in Germany, the United Kingdom. Um, we've got much lower ones in the United States, but you can see the kind of energy savings that you can make with the new GPU at 10 to 20 hours of gaming a week. That's too much gaming, guys. That's too much. Uh, but if you are using the, the, the card for eight hours a day, maybe even longer than that, you're going to save quite a bit of money and you're going to make your money back on whatever the upgrade has cost you uh, pretty quickly if you are a heavy user. So this is another important data point. Guys, I'm very excited with these new cars. I think they're going to do very well. And uh, I hope I will see you guys in the next video.